Hey YouTube, it's Sticky again. Um, so doing an update, and uh, it's not going to be on a, a rifle or a pistol. It's actually going to be on a new bow. Um, it's going to be on my brand new crossbow I just bought this morning um, from Dunham's with one of their hot deal coupons. Um, it is the Barnett Jackal. Uh, comes with did come with mine came with the 4x32 scope um, does not have an adjustable buttstock I mean this the stock is one solid piece um, sorry for the dog she uh, she's actually watching me on camera so I do apologize about that um, came with the rail for the scope came with the scope uh, it's got a rail on the bottom uh, and the the arrow holder system right here, which you got to slide it in sideways first and then turn it counterclockwise and it snaps in. Um, that, the piece that's on the rail uh, is not adjustable, at least not with this, however this one's set up. Um, so if you want to put like a bipod on there, it might be a little hard to do that. Um, so yeah um anyways uh you know first things first um you know it, it came with everything on here but uh you know i, I definitely want to iterate for anybody that's gonna be a new crossbow shooter when you're shooting a crossbow your hands go like this so when you see the videos of people oh i lost my thumb because the string the string smacked it is because their thumbs way up here or their fingers are like this because they got it going through the slit. You hold it like this. That's how you're supposed to hold it. All right. So, anyways, um, came with you know it's a split split limbs, uh, 150 pound draw, is supposed to shoot up to 315 feet per second with 88 pounds of kinetic energy. Um, I don't have a chronograph, so I can't tell you the exact numbers. Um, it was supposed to come with three arrows. It did not. Um, luckily, I picked up a pack of, let's see, four, five, six arrows of the Easton Bloodline crossbow arrows. Um, these did not come with field points, um, so I had to get field points for crossbows. Uh, I just tried putting field points that I had for my regular arrows, and... Uh, yeah, they're too small in diameter. Um, the threads were fine, but otherwise too small in diameter. Um, so I don't want to be shooting those when, when like that. Um, anyways, uh, it's got a 4 pi 32 scope, uh, red and green, uh, reticles. Um, the scope is a six dot. Um, and the first three dots are open circle and it gradually gets smaller and then it goes to solid dots for the last three. Um, depending on how you zero it up, if you shoot, use the first dot for like your 10, 15 and 20 yards and then, you know, 30 to 40, 50 to 60, it, it evidently the scope gets you out to 80 yards. You know, I wouldn't do that for a large game animal, but 80 yards, taking out a woodchuck or something, I would definitely try it. Um, kind of like a little bit of a challenge. So uh, the foot holder right there, you see in a big square, you know, handheld bracket. This right here, uh, it's adjustable. You can stick it out a little further. Um, that's it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, so far, uh, I mean, it's definitely got weight to it. Uh, it's supposed to be 7.7 .7 pounds, so basically eight pounds uh, for weight um, with everything on there. Um, it does have a front swivel stud and a rear swivel stud, so I will put a, my sling that I have on my shotgun, I'll be putting it on here. Um, the safety, which you see this big silver piece right here, um, that you cannot lock back yourself. It only locks back when you pull the string back, uh, cock the string back, um, and then it will not fire until you put an arrow in. So it's got that anti-dry fire technology, which is great. Um, it also came with uh, crossbow lube wax. This is, um, 
I want to say this is only the string wax. I'm not sure. Just says crossbow lube wax. Um, I'm not really sure if it's for the string <coughs> or the rails. So since I already have the boning archery uh, bowstring wax, I went ahead and got their uh, lightning lube uh, rail lubricant. So uh, at least I know specifically for that. Um, I also picked up the Barnett uh, um, rope cocking device. This package did not come with one, so I bought one separately. I bought this at Denim's. Uh, I used a hot deal, got this thing for $279.99. So with the arrows, which are $39.99, uh, original price is $44.99. So six arrows, the rope cocking device, uh, and the loo, that is all I bought, uh, got it for $318.57. Um, so I got all that, uh, need to, wanted to go to the crossbow just because uh, I think it would be a little quicker, easier to take down a deer rather than a compound, plus with my shoulder uh, really not cooperating lately with using my compound, um, that's why I'm just... Going to go ahead and give up, just get a crossbow for hunting. Um, I'll still probably use the compound for like 3D archery shooting. Uh, but when it comes to putting meat in the freezer, I'd rather get a lot more accurate shot, a uh, quicker shot, um, which would involve a lot less movement. I mean, I could just sit here like this and just bring it up, bam. Um, hmm. And if, you know, uh, you know, deer's coming from the right, you know, I can use my left eye, bam, be on target. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's got, definitely got weight to it. It is front heavy. Um, so your balance is actually going to be right here at the foregrip, right where my hand's at. Um, so it's definitely front heavy, so, which is a given. Uh, like I said, not adjustable, not adjustable stock. I mean, I'm I'm five foot nine, five foot ten, and 150 pounds, and this thing, I mean, it fits like right where I got it fits like a glove. So uh, I, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I'm not sure how loud it is. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a lot louder than a compound because you know the poundage is a lot higher. So you know, it doesn't matter if you're shooting a compound bow that you know, is, you know, 80 pound draw or a hundred pound draw, it's going to be louder than your regular compound. Um, it's going to shoot a lot faster. Um, this is supposed to shoot up to, like I said, 315 feet per second. That actually depends on what the weight of the arrow is, the weight of your knocks, adding the veins, adding the insert, adding the, the tip. So it really depends on, uh, you know, what you're shooting. Um, like I said, I got these East End Bloodline arrows, um, crossbow arrows, 20 inch. Um, not actually even sure what the weight is of the arrows, which actually sucks. Would have been nice to know. I actually have to look online because on the arrow itself, uh, this is what the arrow looks like. These this fletching is actually shorter than some of the crossbow fletching I've seen. Like they would actually start back here and end up like way up here. Um, but the design of it looks pretty interesting. Um, this is the carbon graphite one. So uh, you got either the carbon or the aluminum. The aluminum will bend easier. Um, a little easier. Um, you have a greater chance for that, especially if you know an arrow connects and hits you know the side of the arrow. Um, so I mean I always go with the carbon just because it's a it's probably gonna be a little lighter. A um, little heavier, depends. Uh, it's got the half moon knock. I know Barnett requires you to use the half moon knock, or not require, but suggest. So I'm just going to keep with it. I'm not sure on whether or not if I want to get the nocturnal lighted knocks. I would have to do more research in that. Um, just because, you know, I, I know people, I hear people like, oh, my string broke and I don't know what happened. Could be because your string didn't connect with the knock properly because the knock isn't lined up properly and it dry fired the bow. So, you know, a simple mistake. Um, 
all throughout the manual, uh, even on the bow, uh, on the bow right here, actually, you know, right here where the arrow is supposed to go, had this caution warning, big yellow sticker, bam, right across there. Do not place thumb or fingers above flight, track, or in front of cables can cause serious injury. That warning and caution is throughout the manual. Even when you open up the box and flip it open, right there on the lid, there's like six warnings right there. Um, I would show you, but I'm using the box as a, as a stand right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. So hopefully this weekend or really soon I'll be able to get back out in the woods. Uh, after I get this zeroed in for the first time, uh, I, like, I, I mean, I still haven't even taken the tags off. Um, so, yeah, uh, yep, draw weight 150 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, 88, power stroke is 12 inches, and if anyone's interested, the power stroke, as long as I'm understanding it, is for when the string rests all the way up to where the knock inserts, so basically, you know, that first little thing you have sticking in that slot right there, from there to here, that's your that's your power stroke. Um, you know, of course, the longer the power stroke, most likely it's because the longer the crossbow. Um, I don't use a tree stand. I sit on the ground, uh, either in a chair or on my rear end. Um, so having something, you know, short and compact um, is pretty nice. Uh, the width of this, I believe somewhere here's the manual we'll look at see what the manual says uh, width 26.75 inches I'm guessing it's a far outside the outside axle axle I'm pretty sure is slightly shorter than that um, but uh, yeah feet per second 315 Power stroke 12, draw weight 150, physical weight 7.7 .7 pounds, width 26.75 inches, length 35.25, string length 37.875, number of strands 24, uh, string stock number it even gives you, so you can look online, probably order it with that number. Um, oh, for the jackal, it is recommended to use Barnett's 20 inch carbon arrow with half moon knock. I'm pretty sure any carbon arrow that's 20 inches with a half moon knock would be pretty good. Uh, the total arrow weight must be at least, which means a minimum, at least 425 grains with a 125 grain practice tip or broadhead installed. Um, okay. I actually don't have any 125 grains. So... Looks like I will be getting that. Um, I do have fixed broadheads, but I'm not sure what the weight's on them. And I'm not sure what the company is. So um, I'm actually have to get new broadheads and field tips. That's actually nice to know. Good job for reading this. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Oh, it also says here, uh, do not, in big black lettering, do not attempt to alter or, modif or modify the safety or the trigger mechanism. Basically, throughout this whole entire manual, throughout the box and the warning labels, here's the point. Do not alter this bow. Keep your fingers below the finger guard. Keep your hands here. If you move your fingers past and where it could get smacked by the string, um... Not making sure everything's tightened down. Barnett is not liable for any injuries because you lack the common sense and are too. Let me just play it out. Say because you're too stupid to follow directions and warnings and cautions. There, I said it. Uh, so if the string flies and smacks the tip of your thumb off. Your fault, sue is all you want, but not sorry, sue is all you want. I don't work for Matt Barnett, but sue them all you want. Um, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, you're not gonna get anything out of it. Um, sorry, my computer was doing something a little weird. Uh, anyways, um, scope looks pretty good. Uh, so I can't wait to get this out there now that I know that I actually have to get, uh, 
um, higher field tips and uh, broadheads. Still not sure if I want to use mechanical or fixed. Um, I'm a little debating on that. Uh, I might go fixed just because, you know, I know uh, mechanicals out there that are for the crossbows stay closed when in flight. Some of them actually have a rubber band just to make sure. It's just, you know, I really don't know. Um, so, you know, I, I guess I guess it depends. I mean, I, I might go with the, a mechanical, but I don't know. Uh, it's still up to debate. Um, but anyways, uh, so far I'm actually pretty impressed with this. Uh, everything looks great on it. You know, you got your little bit of, a little bit of camos, you know, it's called the Jackal. Kind of looks like a coyote eye. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, um, looks like all pretty good. I made sure everything was tightened down. I mean, you know, right now, you know, with, let me get this thing out of the way. Sure, has got a little looseness in it. Um, I think... Yeah, side to side, back and forth, it's a little loose. Um, pretty sure when you cock it, it tightens up pretty good and is pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll give you an update on that when I actually get this out. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be. Uh, hopefully it'll, the wife will let me out of the house sometime soon. <laughs> um, don't tell her I said that. She'll probably yell at me. Uh, but uh, yeah, um... Any questions, comments, uh, like I said, uh, I'll give you an update how well it shot um, uh, in the future. Um, I'll bring my camcorder. Not sure how well uh, they'll pick things up for, you know, accuracy-wise and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, give you an update on that and catch you guys later. Um, I'm going to, what I've actually been doing, I actually did one already, is I picked up a while ago this Fletch Tight Platinum by Boning as well. And even some of the professionals will even tell you, even the manufacturers, you know, basically get this stuff and put a small dot in front of the fletches and, or the veins, fletchings, whatever you want to call it, and on the rear, um, just to give it that extra strength and durability. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. Clean up my mess here and install that sling and yeah. So uh, catch you guys later. Uh, happy hunting, safe shooting, and see you later. Bye.